What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Rez. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on, Brian? I'm Pedro Rez, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That is right. This is a show we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, and we mash them together to make a monster mash. Let's jump into the coupon code. This week, it's iCase. This is a really nice one. It'll work with everything in the Adafruit shop, except for gift certificates and those subscriptions to Adabox, but it'll get you 10% off everything in the shop other than those things I mentioned. So go to adafruit.com slash free. You can see all the different deals that we have going on. I'm gonna head over there myself. Let's see if the thing is working. Yay. So latest thing that was updated is now every single order will now come with a free Blinka sticker. Blinka is the lovely purple snake python mascot for CircuitPython. So every order that's over a dollar, which means just about everything, will uh, get a free sticker. For orders that are $99 or more, you get a free Perma Proto. That's the half-size breadboard, really nice three-color silkscreen through-hole plating. For orders that are $200 or more, you get the sticker, you get the Perma Proto, and free um, continental US only shipping. That's ground shipping from UPS. If you buy like something huge like a printer, you get that free shipping. For orders that are $2.99 or more, you get the free shipping, the Perma Proto, the Blinka sticker, and a Circuit Playground Express. Our awesome, lovely all in one board that does all the stuff. Very cool. Again, coupon code iCase. How are we doing on audio? Is it Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, everybody in the chat room. Um, we're hanging out. So there you go, freebies. And uh, we got the coupon code. When it comes to delivery options, we have lots of them. One of them is called Same Day Delivery. It's for the folks in New York City. Check out adafruit.com slash shipping for the options. Newsletters. If you would like to join the newsletters, you can subscribe to the once a week newsletter, adafruit.com slash newsletter. We also have a daily newsletter. We have a new one, definitely check it out. We have a, uh, a make code newsletter that's brand new, so check that out. You can subscribe to it by heading on over to adafruitdaily.com. It's a standalone website. It's not tied to anybody's account, so nobody's gonna get spam, which is nice. Adabot is your friend. And then, just getting these links ready. CircuitPython meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to learn about CircuitPython, listen in on the core devs, what they're working on, and a, a chance to uh, let the community uh, share what they're working on as well. Um, it's pre-recorded. Is it pre-recorded? No, it's recorded live in the Discord server. So check out our Discord server. I am in there right now, adafruit.gg slash Discord. We're hanging out in the live broadcast chat room. Howdy, howdy. And a uh, great spot for folks to share their projects or get project help on the sidebar. You can see all the different channels that we have, help with, and then all the different categories that might pertain to your interest. Topics as well. So check it out. We're all hanging out in there. And a couple folks are sleeping because it's early over here in the East Coast. Giving a couple shout outs, Semester Certainly, hey, Troy Mr. Gar, Dewey, Dew Western, and Thomas Veach hanging Folks. out in the chat rooms. Thank you all for joining us every morning. Yep, I'll say howdy to Facebook land. And we are also in, so yeah, it's hard to manage all the chats, <laughs> but we're in Facebook, YouTube, and uh, the Discord. That one's the best one, because, you know, it's a 24 7 chat. So check it out. Invite link is at the top. If you haven't joined already, please do so at discord.gg slash adafruit. All right, got a couple last things uh, before we jump into this week's project. Definitely check out the jobs board, Adafruit jobs board. I think we have some job postings and uh, a couple other new job postings are out there. So if you are a maker looking for some new gigs, check out jobs.adafruit.com. It's free to make a profile and it's also uh, free for employees uh, who are seeking makers um, for employment, you can check it out. It's free to do so. Make your account and get, get yourself out there. Okay, we're gonna jump into this week's project. If we head on over to the learning system, you can see what we got this week. This week, we wanted to make a wearable case for the new Monster Mask. 
this is Adafruit's two-eyed two <laughs> two uh, board that has uh, animated eyes by Philip Burgess. This is amazing. It's got lots of customization options, so much more customization options than the Halloween uh, M0 that you remember from last year. So the case just brings everything in a nice little package. There's no soldering required for this stuff. Um, all the components are on the board except for the speaker and the battery, and that's really all you need. So uh, we're using, uh, you can have a couple different battery sizes. Uh, for this one, we're using the 420, and we're using that little speaker here that's becoming our favorite speaker, and that's really it. So let's jump into the overhead, get a look at our, uh, get a look at our case here. So this is the Monster Max case. When I started designing it, I found it a little bit challenging because there's two displays. And uh, when, you're, when you're making, a, a, like I wanted to cover the whole thing and just expose the displays. Problem with that is that there's always some tolerance differentiations in your, when you're manufacturing. The placement of these are done by hand. They're not done by a machine. And um, the alignment isn't always 100%. So by having an open frame like this, uh, you, can, you don't have to worry about uh, the screens not fitting through it. So that's, that, I was really happy with that. Uh, it is a snap fit together case, so uh, it, it doesn't need any screws. It's just snap fitted together with these little snaps on these ends here. We exposed all, all of the buttons. So you'll see we have three different switches at the top here. This could be useful if you have like a GIF player, a GIF player, and you want to play some audio uh, or you want to make a game or something like that. Um, you can use these as inputs. There's also an accelerometer in here, so you can shake it to do stuff as well. I have the USB port here, which I can take out. Um, so it has micro USB, um, full nat uh, native USB support. Uh, it's got the audio jack. If you want to pump out audio, you can do that here. But I have the speaker in the back there. It has a speaker port. So again, no soldering on that part. You just plug in the speaker and uh, it works really well. On off switches right here. It's got a little notch for you to be able to turn it on and off. There are some uh, chip LEDs on the back here uh, for status indicators and also charging. So uh, here it is turned on. I got my screen, it's on. These are uh, eyes that I customized. So I have a bigger iris and uh, with sort of a purple color. Uh, so yeah, let's look at the back here. So in the back you can see I got two slots for adding a headband, which is really nice. And you can see here I got uh, the little grill holes for the speaker so audio can pump out there. And you can even see the battery back there, which is nice. So to open this guy, let's, uh, let's go ahead and open it. Oh, one last thing is uh, the nose bridge here. You'll notice if you look at it at an angle, you can see that it is actually drafted angle. So it's got this kind of uh, neat little kind of curve that will kind of fit on the bridge in your nose. Um, and if you do want to wear it, you can wear it like that. Um, and one note, uh, if you want some more comfortability, we also 3D printed a little bumper add-ons that you can glue on the back of the case. This is actually printed in Ninja Flex, which is a flexible filament. And uh, if you want to wear it on your head, it will uh, fit like that and it won't uh, cause any pain or anything. Because it's a uh, nice Ninja Flex on your forehead. Squishy. Squishy. And uh, you can add the, uh, the headband as well. I got these little tri-glide uh, buckles that I got from Amazon, as well as this uh, uh, three fourths of an inch, 19 millimeter or 20 millimeter uh, thick bands that are elastic. So you can uh, go down there and you can thread it through this area here, which is nice. So you can wear it like that. Let's go ahead and open it now. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to get my fingernail under um, the little nose bridge area. See, like you get it there. And if you just slide it up until you get to this, if you just slide it right, I'm trying to get it in the camera up right there. You can just kind of lift that up and that will pop that little catcher there. So now it's open. So you can take that out. Now the only thing that gets attached is this speaker. Really cool thing about the speaker though is that the tolerance is nice and tight so it can just pop out. Very nice. As you can see here, uh, normally our little mini over speakers come with like a little double stick adhesive here. I ripped that off because I was prototyping and that's one time use, right? So with this design, uh, it's nice and tight so that you can uh, just press fit it there. It clicks into place and just stays there like that. And it won't fall out. And then you can pop it out by just tugging on it. You have a little cut out here so you can get your fingernail in there and pop it out. So that was a nice one. These are built-in standoffs, so there's no screws. They're just these standoffs with little pegs that go through the mounting holes. And that's kind of it, little lip there. And you can see the, the actual pieces that catch the little snap fit area. That's kind of hard to see with this filament, but it's right there. It's like a V shape and it catches onto the little nubs 
on the side of the on the side of the case here. Those are the nubs right there. All right, so there you go. All right, so to take this out, um, I just put it at an angle, and then it'll just slide right out like that. So there you go. This is the full bare board with all the components. Again, there's no soldering here because it's all assembled for you. You just uh, plug in the uh, the speaker and the battery right there on the back. Here you can see all the components. You get the switches up here, expansion ports for extra sensors, servos, motors, accelerometers somewhere over here. We also have a light sensor. And we also have a capacitive touch. What, ha what happens when I touch his, his nose? Woo, I get a little boop effect. So he's animating. Uh, so you've got lots of different inputs that you can play with. Very, very cool. So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to plug it in through USB and we're going to change the color or texture of the eyes. So let's do that. So I plugged it in. I'm just going to take a second to boot up onto my drive. Let's see if I have, um, you know, I'll have to create a new one. Let's see if I can do this live. So duplicate shot. Go here. Go here. Go to screen capture, go to monitor, and then the entire monitor should now be there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go to my finder because I'm on a Mac, sorry. And then uh, I will go to the mask boot drive, and that's where it is. So you have a couple of files here. Hazel is the directory that has all the image maps. So you can see these are all the bit maps that are in there. I have a couple in here stored just to kind of make it a quick cooking show. As you can see, that's the iris bitmap. I'm going to change that to iris perp because it's purple, and then I'll change this title to just say Iris Bitmap. So essentially what I did was I just swapped out the bitmap image. Uh, and then you can see that these are the eyelids. This is the Scalera. I'm not using it actually, I'm using a solid color, but you can see it looks freaky deaky. And uh, here's the white Scalera if you want to do that, and you have your upper and lower eyelids. So we'll take a look at all those bitmaps in a second here, but just showing you what I have on my drive. We also have in config.i, this is just a text file, so you can open that in your text editor, and then you'll see that we have um, a bunch of options here. This is really nice. So we have boop threshold, iris, radius, eye radius, all these different things. We'll take a look at them in a minute, um, but for now, uh, that's what my default config is. So I can come in here and change any of these values if I want. If I want a smaller eye, I could probably do that. Let's do that right now. Let's say I want a 60 iris. It's a little bit smaller. It's probably really, really small now. All right, so I'll close that out. And really all I got to do now is just uh, re hit the reset button on my device. So let me go back to um, my overhead if I can manage it. There it is. He hasn't updated yet. And the reset button is right there, easily accessible. Let's go ahead and hit that. It's going to take a second to reboot. It's going to uh, load up all the bitmaps and map them onto the as a texture. And there it is. How quick is that? Very nice. I could also change the Scalara and change the bitmaps if I wanted to. The, the, uh, the eyelid bitmaps have a different shape, so you can change the shape of the blinks, of the eyelids. It's amazing. Let's see what the boop looks like. Ha <laughs> ha that's cool. This is actually, um, this is, I was going for a uh, Sharingan from uh, Naruto. Uh, this would be Ichigo, Sasuke, it, Sasuke Ichigo's eyes, sort of when he first got them. But anyway. Uh, that's totally wrong. <laughs> Sasuke Uchiha. <laughs> Sasuke Uchiha? Yeah. What did I say? Uchiha Sasuke? You were blending Bleach and Naruto. <laughs> I was? Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> I haven't watched them in a while. But hey, that's what I was going for. Anyway, that looks really cool. So um, why don't we go ahead and, oh yeah, by the way, you can, rechar you can recharge the battery while, um, while programming and all that stuff. So when you plug in your micro USB, we're just going to charge that battery while you do all the cool stuff with the, with the file system. Really nice, a really awesome system. It's really quick to iterate and change graphics. Like, oh man, it's, it's freaking amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the learn guide. I want to show you guys. Real quick before that, Troy was asking in the chat, can it hold onto the lens? And where did the part go? I was just here. A little circular a holder. That. Yep. We're still on the overhead. Not yet. I'm gonna show this real quick. We're using our Convex lens is in a different project right now that we're prototyping. <laughs> I'll show that off later, but yeah. we have this little cylindrical little holder with some standoffs. We're waiting actually on some longer screws. Yes, go this, on this, uh, this case exposes the, uh, the holes here, so you will have room to put the, uh, even the acrylic kit lens holders. I believe that will also work. Mm -hmm. so, so you'll use this in that mounting hole to keep it in there. That's really it. I don't have the yep. longer screws yet. They're still coming in stock. Uh, they'll and, be uh, here in a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, 
the uh, what is it? The the convex lens is also out of stock. Yeah, so we it's just searched a all the internet to find a. Yeah, a like kind a of tap a, plastics, and I can't find the exact can't find one that has it. We can find one, but it doesn't have a flange. You really need mm -hmm. that flange yeah, uh, in order on. for the, the the lens to not pop out. Yeah, so this should be on the exact same thing over link where the case is posted. Yep. So when you're putting this back, just make sure that your cable isn't being kinked. The little thin cable there is from the speaker, of course. And then when you're putting this in, um, you can just snap it in like that. And then Alan was asking about, um, can this can the speaker actually be used for, uh, this is basically how loud is it? It's freaking loud. It's loud. I don't have code yet um, it's very that uses loud. it, but we can totally do that. And so this is the exact same speak oval speakers that we've been using in past prop projects. Check out yep. the Master Sword build that we yeah, did with these. really loud. It is super loud. Yep. And, and this is like it. default volume too. You can right. turn it up as well yeah. and get even louder. Is there a pot on there? I'm not sure, but yeah, you can, it's pretty Oh loud. no, I meant uh, specifically with the Master Sword, we're using Prop Maker that does have the little It's funny, like pop there's on still, there. the thickness is nice to where I would put a 500 milliamp battery in there. We're just doing the 420 for reasons, um, but the 500 milliamp battery is a little bit thicker and it fits perfectly in here. You, you can hear that there's a little bit of wiggle room in there. So you could tack it down if you want. Or um, add or get some a bigger battery. gaffer's tape on it, just sure. add a little bit more protection. Yeah. Yep depending on how you want to do it. Cool, okay, so let's move on, let's to, move the on to the learning guide. guide. Yeah, I just want to walk through um, the quick start guide. So my guide is just more about the case. Here's the case. Uh, I want to walk through the quick start guide from uh, Phil B and Lamar. So this is the quick start guide. <laughs> the quick, quick start guide, excuse me. And uh, right here you can uh, upgrade the firmware. If you got the first batch of, Hollow of monster masks, you'll want to upgrade your firmware. This is how to do so. But if you are getting it in the second round, then you won't have to do this, but this is all here in case something really goes wrong. So you can uh, load the firmware. Really, it's as simple as uh, plugging in USB and, and drag and dropping this UF2 file onto the drive that shows up and it will flash itself automatically for you. So that's really nice. Um, and then there's like a, even more broken down if you have Windows, you know, you gotta do a little special Windows stuff. Actually, no, you don't, you just kinda, it's just the screenshot in Windows. <laughs> This is what it looks like when it first boots up without any of the assets. So it's kind of like clean and bare. So here are the assets for the eyes. By default, we have uh, some graphics for you to play around with, as you saw right here. And uh, that's the folder structure. So it just walks you through that, the eye configuration, and um, where, how you want your folder structure. These screenshots are helpful. If you're really, really like, I don't know what's going on, these screenshots will help you out. All right, you hit the reset button and bam, bam, you got your graphics loaded. Super simple. Now, customization. This is where you're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, this just walks, this just kind of talks about the format. It's kind of JSON. It's basically written in the syntax of, of JSON, so you can clearly read it. Um, it's, it reminds me of CSS. Uh, so here we have the default configuration file. It has pupil color, the back color, iris texture, sclera texture, upper eyelid and lower eyelid. These are just the kind of default parameters. There's actually more parameters if you dig down and go to the next page. So let's do that. Preparing the graphics. So if you don't know anything about eyes, this is gonna give you a good breakdown on like the anatomy of an eye, right? You got iris, you got your pupil, sclera, your upper eyelid and your lower eyelid. When it comes to uh, texture mapping and how does it actually work uh, in the code, uh, well, not in the code, but like actual, what does it look like? This is the bitmap, and this is what it looks like once it's uh, spheralized on, onto, the, uh, onto the eye. And here you can see the texture map uh, for the sclera, which is the white stuff with the veins and stuff, and then the iris texture map, so you can get a good look at how it kind of works there, how it's kind of mapping it onto this spherical eye looking thing. We got a little bit of, uh, of paragraphs about uh, image storage, uh, bit, uh, 24 bit bitmaps is uh, nobody's favorite, but it's the easiest for the microcontroller to handle. So you're wondering, why doesn't it work with JPEGs? Because we haven't written the code for that yet. It's kind of massive. Uh, so this just tells you a little bit about RAM. You want to be a little bit cautious about RAM. I didn't worry about that really at all, and I was able to not hit anything. This just there for like super extra detail like, yeah, super detail right some math stuff there too if you want this is this right here shows you how you can be really clever with the textures 
I remember the days of CSS where I would create a two pixel <laughs> a texture mm -hmm. and repeat so it repeat and it. create this cool complex texture. This is a great example of doing that uh, with uh, a tiny eight by two texture and uh, as opposed to a huge 512 by 128 pixel texture, you can create these cool repeating patterns by being smart and clever about uh, the way your, I guess the way your pixels are. <laughs> so that's cool, very, very cool you can do that. Um, there's even more stuff about digits of pi and, and stuff like that. When it comes to the eyelids, these are the default textures. Now, interesting note about these bitmaps is they're one bit images, not 24 bit. So the code looks at this and uses it as an alpha channel, right? You, if you're doing any video stuff, you'll know about alpha channels. Uh, it's basically the white is what is seen and the black is what is not seen. So this is how the, uh, the, uh, the graphics, uh, the eyelid graphics look like. And uh, this right here shows you how they overlap slightly, and that's, that way uh, you get a perfect blink. They overlap a few pixels, that makes a solid blink. Uh, and you can completely change the shape. You can use an open source image editor or something like Photoshop if you are down with that one. And now you can create your own. I created my own, that's how I got these shapes here. They're uh, really rounded shapes. I was th th trying to make it more cute, so that was my goal. And uh, more information about uh, how you can play with them if you want a solid blink or something like that. Or, uh, a different blink. All right, when it comes to the configuration settings, here's a nice breakdown of all the stuff. Um, shapes and sizes, of course, you can change the eye radius, the iris radius, and here's a really good uh, look at the numbers. What is a radius versus the diameter? Uh, your screen size versus uh, the iris size. And this right here, this is called, you see the way that the pupil is no longer a perfect circle? It is now a slit. This is great for creating dragons and other monsters like that. So it's a third setting called split pupil radius. Once you add that to your i, to your config.i file, it will tell the code to make the, to render out the shape, the, the pupil like that. And you have control over the radius of that split, which is really neat. When it comes to colors and textures, you have the option to use a solid color or a bitmap. So that is really nice if you're doing more of a cartoony look you'll uh, want to go with a, uh, a solid color. And I believe we're using the RGB uh, 0 to 255 values, si similar to like uh, RGB LEDs, NeoPixels. Pupil color, the back color. The back color, it's broken down here. It's the outermost backing part of the eye where the scalera texture doesn't reach. So you can get a little um, background color there for it. And you could also use this DMA um, color map. So if you want to use these instead, you can use those. Distinct left and right eyes. If you want to, you have each eye be a different color. You can do that in this setting. And then uh, even more settings, texture map angle. If you have a very specific angle that you want your texture max to be rendered at, you can adjust the setting here. So you can tell it, and these are nice little graphs to give you an example of uh, what the setting is doing. Mirroring if you want. Here's the true and here's the false. There are so many more things that are being worked on as well. Here's an, uh, there's an added light sensor and other input configurations here. It's still being worked on, so that's, that's great. But for now, there's so much customization options right now. So that's really, really cool. So shout out to Phil B and the team for this amazing work on the monster mask. It's just a, a, um, a fraction of all the amazing things it can do. And we'll be working on more projects um, in the coming weeks. <laughs> I think it's a perfect uh, segue into prototyping stuff, maybe? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to put this on my head now, wear it. I'm just going to literally take yeah. it out of the case and put it in the you other get case. get my thing to not fall apart. Mm -hmm. Do you want Still your overhead? Still getting uh, tolerances on my project right. here. I'm going to switch to chat while we uh, assemble stuff. Let's see. So that was fun. We just barely scratched the surface of the monster mask. Last week, it, was it in stock last week? I want to jump over to the overhead I'm real quick it was in stock. before this guy falls apart since I am updating oh, wow, tolerances funny. and getting all of the uh, fittings and all of that whatnot. Uh, one of the things that I don't know if we mentioned, you What's can that? split these, uh, you can split the PCB apart. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. So the PCB would split right, right here and yeah, split right here. There's perforated lines right there. You can actually see the perforated lines. 
if I could focus. And uh, you can use uh, cutters, flush cutters, just to cut right there. And it'll kind of cut for you because the perforated lines are there for you. Um, but it is strong. Like, you can't, you could probably snap like that, but you probably shouldn't. could, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. And uh, there's a perfect, it looks great. But the only thing is when you cut that off, this will no longer work because that's, that's a piece of it. So there you go. Let's switch back over now and you can show us the split eyes. Yeah, so this is what it looks like when you split the guy apart. Much more creepier. Creepy yeah, factor goes to like 100. So it's a headband attached with some Ninja Flex uh, little, what did we do this on? We used it on previous the projects. Flex charger, I think is what you yeah, called it. Yeah, one of those. Uh, it was like that. Got the director guy. Yeah, it was a like sucking a, charger. Yeah, it so would suck the. Uh, look that up on the, the learning juice. guide. <laughs> Made these uh, Ninja Flex guts and uh, intestines to make it look like a charger was biologically charging your phone. Right. But anyway, we used the geometry for that for these really cool antenna eyes that'll go on top of your head. So Ninja Flex, of course, are all elastic and flexible. And we have a, I actually had to solder on longer cables and then some JST extenders so we could get these to be separated a lot more further apart than usual. We oh, do you built have, your own cable. That's awesome. Yeah, so we do sell a nine pin cable that you can, I don't want to move this apart. Uh, do we have another That's one? Fine. Or you want to show that one? That doesn't matter. You can check out the product link on what the pins look like to hook up the nine pin oh, yeah, cable for that. that. All I did was just chop it in half and extend it with the 10 cable ribbon yeah. uh, silicone coated wires that we have. Yeah, these are perfect. The, um, the JST SH is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a port right behind the PCB where your the boop area would be split. Yep. So, yeah. Back over, yeah, these are so cool. Creepy when they're on your head, you're just wheeling <laughs> them around. <laughs> and uh, we will uh, up, uh, have a guide and learn uh, guide for this. Or learn guide and video, sorry. Sweet. So cool. Yeah, still work in progress. You could still adjust and change things around, so very cool. And as you can see here, I have the lens holder built into mm -hmm. the little holders here. So is one plastic and one's glass? <laughs> Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> One's heavier than the other. I know. That's funny. Yeah, you want to go with the plastic one, it's not. It's a lot less heavy. Yeah. Cool, that is very cool. Yeah, this can be like an alien costume. Let's see, real quick questions. Alan is asking, uh, can we set the bitmaps over time to create animations like a flaming eye as an yes, example? Yes, yes, so that would be the GIF player code. Yes. So once you were able to just play any GIF, then you can do anything, mm -hmm. whether it's an eye or a meme. We were thinking like, you know those games that you that you play when you're waiting in line and it's like charades, you put the phone up and you're like, oh, what are you guessing? Well, it'd be funny if these were playing GIFs and you're trying to guess the meme Yeah. and then you would press the button and it would be like, hey, there's something, something. Mm -hmm. I just turned it off. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, there are, what is it, three buttons that are on there? Yeah, there's three buttons right here. So we can have that be uh, right reverse, here. play, right. or forward, back, and play, forward, or back pause. And play. Pause. So We're, is uh, Lamar is working on that one, I believe, still. Yep, so that's one of the ideas right. for that. It's using Arcada. Other stuff that we're prototyping, library. if you jump over to the overhead, there was an yes. update to the hollowing as well. We now have the M4. What is the hollowing? So last year, we had a single version of the eyeballs. So we have this little guy here, and it is a Single PCB. board? Yep, it's a single board with a display on it. It's got an accelerometer, ports, and capacitive the shape touch. Of a skull, so all these, you know were saying, capacitive touch here. Uh, we have a little battery on the back here. You also have headers on the back, so you can actually add a feather or wing on top of there. You have access to some more uh, inputs. So you can is, add like a... Is this the... Did we make a GPS tour guide with the Halloween? Uh, GPS tour guide. Yes, we, we did. Yes, 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 yes. That's hilarious. Yeah, so we <laughs> added like, a, a minute, uh, GPS. We didn't, we didn't have Pi Portal back then, did we? Yeah, so we had a GPS uh, feather on there. So yeah. one of the things we had to do was update this, and some of the components did get pushed around. Uh, the JST is a little bit closer to the standoff that is holding this in place, so we had to do some adjustments to that. Okay, and so then, I think we missed it. This is a different board. We have an M0 and now an M4. The M4 has a bigger display, IPS, 240 by 240, so it's a higher res screen mm -hmm. and way better viewing angle. Go ahead and show them at the angles how 
Damn, right how there. it like almost inverts the colors on the M0. That's last year's uh, model. <laughs> this year's model. And so a solar processor it's a retina it display. has a uh, not as good viewing angle, but it's still really good. All of the projects will still run sure. on this guy. And the case, as you've seen, it will be compatible with both the M0 and the M4. Uh, we can't really at the M4. I don't know what I'm showing. Go back to the display, please. I'm, uh, I mean to pull up the, because we missed the, all the lights on the sides and all that stuff. Oh yeah, I don't have the code on that for that. Right, that's why I wanted to show the so view page. angle and this stupid thing is not going to cooperate in terms no, of no. I've already focusing. Up so I can't really show you how much better the quality is on it. Uh, the rendering on this looks really good. Just as good as the Raspberry Pi version of this, which has nice beefy GPU so you can render all those nice and crisp. Yeah, you can see it there. Compared to the other one, there's like jaggedness. There's like pixelization on the M4 version. The M0 has uh, uh, the 240 by 240 IPS screen, so you're able to get more uh, yeah, pixel M4. density on there. Yeah, and M4. the M4 one. Yeah. And you still have all the usual uh, sensors, like the light sensors. You can see the pupil is um, uh, growing and shrinking there as the sun is going over the yeah. as the clouds are going over the sun and all that. Focus depth is still changing. Have speaker, outputs, <laughs> microphone, all that good stuff. All the features Capture. you know and love of the older yeah. Right, M0. I'm just saying that the people that have never heard of this before. Yeah, no. It's really confusing. It's like, wait, you have, what? <laughs> Doing this for a while. It's like the, you know, iPhone Plus or Pro. Sure, all right, I'm gonna go to the thing now, the, the website. Hey, here we go, there's the product page. Guess what, it's actually in stock. So go get it, 10% off your order. I, I, I was about to say eye candy, eye case. <laughs> there, make some eye candy there. Yeah, so it, it has those LEDs. You can see them shining there. They're, they're surface mounted, um, side lit, NeoPixels. So the links for the cases are in the guide as well as uh, in the product images or the product mm -hmm. um, pages for this. If you scroll down, you can they're see all the little... guides that these are in. Oh, no. I changed it up. Well, because this is the new one. Ah, okay. So the if you go to the old one, one M0, it's right here. So we'll have to add this to the guide then. And if those you are out of stock. Scroll down a little bit. You can see all of the different guides that this project or this product has been used in. Don't don't not see this. Click on the all see all guides because there's way more than that, and this there will just go. give you all the different ones. Lots of fun stuff. Now you can make a, a 3D maze board. where you control the maze with the accelerometer. No, no, no. We're talking about Halloween. Ouija board. Where? Oh, you this can make one? Yeah. a lightsaber. Of course, you can stick it in skulls. Light painting. My wife's favorite one is the Hocus Pocus book. So you can hollow out a book. Mm -hmm. Or you can just stick it on a pumpkin if you need a last minute project. Terminator Eye from Jump Park. Tiny Museum from Jump Park. Look at this really googly eye one. one. Look at this one. See you guys. All seeing eye. You can wear it on a shirt. Play it, make a cat toy. Googly eye. Yeah, a googly eye. Yeah, you googly shake eye. it and it googles the eye. That would be cool. Head. Hit, shake your head and it does that. Mm -hmm. I think it's being covered up by your uh, picture in picture there. <clears throat> nope. There you go. Cool. So those, uh, that's Halloween. The Halloween. Yeah, I kept calling this the Halloween mask or something <laughs> like that, but no. Nope. Other stuff we've been prototyping. Um, went over to Galaxy's Edge. We during did. The hurricane. Sure, we did. Last week. That's actually where we were. Yeah. So we saw this really cool <laughs> Coke uh, dispensary. It has an animatronic on it. Come yeah. on, animatronic. There you go. There you go. So there was a hoax going around that the TSA wasn't allowing the bottles to go oh, on airplanes. <clears throat> so PT wanted us to pick some up and then redesign or remodel the little caps for these. And uh, a lot of that. people thought they weren't going to be able to bring it home. So we wanted to bring this uh, or allow people to just 3D print this and uh, put them on any compatible a little coke cap so yeah. there's like a 30 millimeter uh, diameter uh, coke cap and this works really good actually looks a little bit better than the actual original one which looks like this uh, so what i had to do was optimize it of course for 3d printing so all of the draft angles are with, uh, 35 degrees or 40 degrees so they'll print optimal since a, this one has a lot of overhang i'm going to print this guy and the splines all came out pretty good Using the uh, CR10S Pro on all these and the Vertico and the Prusament uh, glitter filaments for this. We also got them in a couple of other different colors. So it looks really good in uh, all the grays, blacks, and this uh, 
It's gold here. You know, what's funny it's is cool. this adds... Um, Ergonomics! Yeah. It's a lot easier to twist that than mm -hmm. your bare bottle cap. Yeah, because you have like three points of uh, grabbing onto it. You have these uh, bigger little, uh, I don't know what they're called, like fins. And then you have like these indented ones. And then you got the ones on top as well. Yeah, this super is super easy. ABS, open. I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna guess it's ABS. So they come off. They're not glued on. They're just press fitted on to the actual uh, Galaxy's Edge Coke mm -hmm. bottles. Having a request for actually modeling the entire bottle, but I don't right. know. We'll see. Yeah. It makes a nice Christmas ornament. Yeah, but the cap yeah, is. You just take that off. It looks like no bomb. I know. You just take that. It off, was a it hoax. Off. Nobody was really. Uh, yeah, it's so stupid. They're allowed. <laughs> But there you go. We will release this, uh, I think, next week. Is it time lapse Tuesday or something? Okay. Right. Otherwise, these are super cool little giveaways. I think these look. These are way yeah, better than those maker coins that everybody makes. Which sure. Is basically, just trash these. You can actually put them to use, and they look look super cool. They resemble. I guess they're supposed to be like a lightsaber, huh? Yeah, the pommel. Yeah, the pommel of the lightsaber. Yep. So we will release these. Fusion three sixty file, so you can update the diameter to fit your uh, yeah, every bottle different. cap. Oh my god, I know. I thought it would fit all of them. They're all mm -hmm. slightly different sizes. So you'll be able to adjust the um, diameter for that. Talk cool. about these next week. We'll release them then too. Cool. I uh, might have missed if you want to pick up the Halloween, which is in stock, the M4 version. You can use coupon code ICASE. Get you 10% uh, off that order. Very cool. All right, well, let's jump into QA real quick, if anybody has any questions. Yep, we answered the bitmaps. Cool. All right. All right, just the laptop, okay. Can we just jump it into this week's Community Makes? Yeah, let's do that. All right, this week we 3D printed something from the community. This week it's a mechanical ghost. It's a really fun one. Check it out. You can load the Thingiverse page. This is a really nice little mechanical Halloween themed ghost. Uh, this is uh, uploaded a couple of years ago. It actually won one of those Thingiverse awards for a contest. And this actually came to my attention because uh, the designer for this posted on one of the previous Time Lapse Tuesdays. And I checked out his profile and was like, whoa, this is a really cool uh, ghost design. And one of the cool things is the mechanical part of it, it looks like he 3D printed it to go on a turntable, but he didn't actually assemble it to enable the spinning, how you see it here in this video. Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself to go ahead and make a quick little cutout using just this foam board and then holding on to the top of the oh, uh, a loop. little uh, ghost guy here. And there's three gears here, one on each hand and a main gear right here on the bottom that's actually turning to create the little wavy effect. So if I turn this guy on, you can see him. I don't know if it'll work <laughs> completely sideways like that. Bit of this camera. So I don't sure. have to, just in case it falls apart. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, we can adjust it. So this adorable little waving ghost guy that's being driven by the gears on each of his hands and the main gear down here on the body. Uh, so on the inside, you can kind of see the TT motor, a little yellow one, and a battery pack. It's pretty much all it is. Battery pack, TT motor, and then the little twisty tie here that's just holding onto the top portion of the ghost cool. as he spins around. Cool, no microcontroller, just a battery. You can add one motor. to adjust the speed, like a Cricket or a, a Circuit Playground Express. Mm -hmm. You can able to do that. But adorable, printed in glow-in-the-dark PLA which I didn't do a really good job of showing there, but it looks really cool at night. Yeah, you can see the uh, the gears rotating through the eyes. I can kind of see them there. There's some slop to it, but that's because you... It's the angle that it's, I'm holding it yeah. at. So okay. yeah, you yeah. can hold in like that. Yeah. Let's see how... Really nice prototype, though. You just get some foam core and mm -hmm. cut up some pieces, make a platform. Pull it all together, yeah. So the platform becomes the enclosure for the battery exactly. and the motor. Yep. Did you have to make a little extra connecting hub for the... For the no, the, I don't know if he planned it out this way, but the hubs actually fit right inside no with our uh, TT motor little adapters yeah. that we also have in the shop. No way, really? Yeah. What? That's cool. So all I did was press it in. I didn't have to glue anything. Cool. Uh, aside from 
building a little box yeah, enclosure. Course. And this little guy holds this in place, the little twisty tie. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Just so he doesn't spin along right. with the rest of the body. Yeah, that way, yeah. It's pretty clever mechanical. The gears are interesting too. Let's take a look at the Thingiverse page. So mesmerizing. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, here's the kit, all the parts print. There's the gear, one of the gears. There's a little arm. This could be used for something else if you want to make something. Yeah, it's a really different. good idea for Very other cool. geared moving. Yeah. So check Halloween it out if you want to build your own. A couple people have built one, and uh, now you can add a motor to it. Very cool. Let's check that out. Really nice little Halloween prop desk toy. One for the kids. Yeah, you're right. 2014. Very cool. Well, that's the uh, that's the community make. Sorry. I got some other there. stuff. Um, so last week we. Uh, we went to, we did this project, the Neon, Neon NeoPixel Mickey Ears. Oh, yeah. We got a chance to check out uh, Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios here in Florida. And here we're at the, uh, the Halloween party, actually. The mm -hmm. not so spooky thing at the Magic Kingdom. It was a lot of fun. We brought our Black Magic uh, camera, the 4K Pocket Cinema camera, whatever they call it. A lot of fun filming with our 50 mil lens. Was it 50 mil? 20 mil? Whatever it was. I don't know. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so I definitely checked out this project. We talked about it for a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, you shake before. your head and change the animation. It's yeah, yeah. Cool. so we're using uh, two different ones, a, uh, or two different controllers here. We're using the Gemma M0, M0 and a Trinket M0. M0. You can check out the full guide on instructions, how to set this up. It's pretty much just a uh, a little crafting. It's a wearable. It's a wearable. Project. You're you're crafting. You're um, you're mm -hmm. cutting. You're you're soldering um, into nice tight corners here to yeah. get this really clean, seamless. I love build. these neon like neopixel oh, strips. They yeah, diffuse great. so beautiful. And it worked out really well here because you're shooting the light forwards, not behind you. So the folks that are enjoying the parade aren't gonna get blinded by the neopixels. Mm -hmm. And they're nice and waterproof. Uh, of course, it was a hurricane, so it was. There's bubbles. There was lots of rain. <laughs> lots and of bubbles. They survived all that with silicone sheathing that's on there. Yeah. And that is just, a, we built our first pair, didn't have the neon. We actually didn't have them in stock yet. And we didn't think to use them until we got them in stock. And we're like, hey, this looks really mm -hmm. nice. So we, we figured we'd build two different sets. One that shows the kind of traditional marquee like effect and the other neon. Um, both programmed with make code from Microsoft. So that was the real eye-opener here is that Maker Make Code works with so many boards. A lot of the M0 boards from Adafruit and a lot of the boards from uh, the community. So a lot of boards from SparkFun and, and other folks. So that was really fun. And that was the uh, one of the biggest takeaway right there, being able to program this inside of Maker. That Make Code is right. built the circuit diagram for you. Oh my gosh. able to yeah. add these interactivities to it that we would know how to do. Yeah, man, it's really, really cool. So definitely check out the project. There's a bunch of hidden little details in terms of like the tools that we used, the yeah. uh, ceramic craft blades. Oh, right, did for, an excellent for job of slits and uh, thicker material. Yeah, they also have different blades too, which I should have checked out. They have like seam rippers Oh yeah, and such. I want a seam ripper. Yeah, so That'd be great. definitely check out that guy just for a bunch of those little golden nuggets of info for constructing these. I assure you, my eyes are open, and I am not napping. <laughs> Remember that Simpsons episode? <laughs> Let me run through the notes like, <laughs> here. Uh, we got more stuff for here, but we, we don't have time to show you. Yeah, we'll show it off next week. Yeah. I think that's going to do it. Yeah, we need to get back to this. Yep. Cool. Um, let me check real quick. Uh, don't forget, uh, we have the Monster Mask as an Instagram Facebook filter. So if you'd like yes. to wear it on your face without actually having to purchase it, because it's out of stock right now, you can, you can check out the, you get the Instagram filter. Um, we have a couple other ones as well. So somebody was asking about sticking the eyes into a, into a uh, head. Oh, yeah? The, Quickly show there? off what that looks like, the, the, or the do it next week. I'll do it next week. I don't okay. want to trip over any cables. It does work. Spoiler. Yeah, you can fit it. Spoiler, it Spoiler. does work. Why are you spoiling? <laughs> okay. What else do I have here? I think that's it. Oh, don't forget, I have a, if you are a modeler of 3D-ness and you'd like to make a case or a project uh, with a monster mask, we have the PCB file as a 3D model in different formats. So you can download this and model around it or snap it in mm -hmm. half and model 
customize. So yeah, you can you download go. it as a DFX file. So if you have a laser cutter, you can go oh, ahead and right. cut out the shape. Yeah, we also have the laser cut case that's file right. on the learn guide that we yes. were looking at. So you can check it there. All these files will be available in the links right now and also in the learn guide that we looked at. So check those links out. There you go. I think that's going to do it for this so. episode of 3D Hangouts. Thank you all for joining <laughs> us Yay. every week. That's right. We do the show every th Wednesday. Wednesday. I almost said Thursday. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. On we Thursday, got like though, five shows have, coming on today. <laughs> yeah, but on Thursdays is when all of the 3D printed blog posts come out. So definitely right. check out the blog at blog.adafruit.com for hour by hour of useful 3D printed projects that the whole community works on makes. That's right. And later today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, there's a hack chat going on. Yes, check that out. I got a blog link All for about you. machine learning. Yeah, it's Lots gonna happen really at 3 cool p.m. stuff going on with the Raspberry Pi hat. Yep, Lauren Phil did a kind of a quick video about it and we're gonna do a live chat, so check it out. It's gonna be at 3 p.m. today. Today, 3 today. p.m., tune in for that. Make sure to click on that bell icon so you get notified anytime new uh, live shows and project videos are uploaded. That's right. It's and several times a week. Yeah. Somebody released a blog post on the electronic companies that have the most videos every week. I think we were like top at uh, something like 12 videos every week, something like that. Sweet. I just typed in Discord question mark show times and it gives you a breakdown of all the shows and the schedules when they're when they're running. So 3D Hangout, Show and Tell, Ask Engineer, Desk Lady, and Jump Park. So that's just a note. Nice work there, Discord crew. Okay, so later tonight, after the hack chat, we're doing another show, Show and Tell. That's where folks from the community from all over the world come in and share their projects. Every participant gets a free vinyl sticker. That's a nice one for your projects. And then shortly after the Show and Tell, Lamar and Phil are gonna do a full hour of live streaming. Um, ask Engineer, that's the name of the show. You can uh, ask an actual engineer at the end of the show and call in and get something free. Happens the, every week. One of the coolest parts of Discount the show. Discount codes as well, the coolest part of the show. And, as well uh, as all the new products coming out. So open source news. Check that out. Insider baseball, that <laughs> sort of stuff. It's all tonight, so 8 p.m. for the Ask Engineer. And then tomorrow there's another show with John Park. So check out John Park's workshop every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Gearing up for Adabox, so definitely tune in for that. And of course, all of the playlists where all the Make Code Minutes, Make Code Arcade tutorials live. Yep, and there's a new one, the weekly Make Code, where he mm -hmm. looks at some Make Code mm -hmm. stuff from the community, games and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Wow, lots of cool stuff. So check it out. Let's see. Thank you all yeah. for joining again. <laughs> Oh man, I'm just clicking all the buttons. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, we got the show and tell tonight and tomorrow we have a jump park. So until then folks, remember to make a great day. Make some eyes. <laughs> Bye. See you next week.